Finally, now that I've replaced my deathbed of a laptop, I can finally make stupid YouTube videos again. So I want to welcome everyone to a series that I've started calling Worst Animated Films. I know it's not really the best name, but it gets the point across, and I don't really want to find a name that just resembles someone else's content. The name says it all. It could be anything from Western Studios to foreign films to mockbusters from all over the globe, anime films, anything that counts as animation, and just outright sucks. I am always taking requests for this series and I will add every title I see to my watch list. They can be movies that are so bad that they're amazing, stuff that I'd recommend anyone to watch, or just movies that are unwatchable garbage. And today's film is an example of just that, something that bothers me to my core. If anyone has been here since the beginning of this channel, you'll likely remember that I considered Dougal the worst animated movie that I've ever seen. And so far, I've stuck by that. Nothing has irritated me more than the existence of this fucking movie. It exhibits everything I dislike about not just bad animated movies, but movies in general. So until I find something that tops this, I'll be making this my declarative worst animated movie placeholder for the channel. Now some people in my audience may not know what this movie is, or even that there are technically three versions of this film, the original French version, the United Kingdom dub, and then the United States dub, which is the version that we'll be discussing today. And I'm also willing to bet that some of you might not even know about the original source material that spawned this film. And to be fair, I didn't either until I discovered a YouTube re-upload of an old television broadcast that featured some very familiar looking characters. And then the rest of the blanks were filled when I watched a few videos by a YouTuber named Jamboriki, probably my favorite channel that reviews animated films. I'd go check them out if you have the chance. My full thoughts on this film aren't going to be very long. In fact, I don't expect to take up very much time with this video at all. My big problem with this movie is relevant to the history of its production, however, so I'm gonna start with a little backstory on a show called The Magic Roundabout. True to give him a ride. You'll have to pay, dear. Pay? said Dylan. Like, uh, pay? Originally, the show was called La Menage Enchante, oh, as it was the creation of French animator Serge Danant. I, I can't say these names without sounding fucking ridiculous, oh my god. Each episode of the show was about five minutes long and had a catalog of over 400 episodes. It premiered in France back in 1963 and was eventually picked up by the British Broadcasting Corporation. British actor Eric Thompson adapted new scripts purely from observing the footage of the French animation, never even looking into the original script. As a result, the plot lines weren't all that similar to the original, and the names of its characters were completely overhauled, while Eric Thompson provided narration through each episode, something that didn't exist in the original. The show did really well in England, not just because it's a successful kids show, but because it adopted an interested adult audience as well, akin to how bronies bonded with My Little Pony back when it was first released. The United States even picked up the Magic Roundabout, though it took a very different approach than the British version. Since we properly translated it from French to English the same way something like anime might be translated and dubbed in the States. Hey, Mr. Dougal, what's the weather like up there? Oh, the air is good. <laughs> now, that's not to say that either incarnation is better than the other because of their different styles of adaptation. As awesome as it is that the Americans took the time to translate everything, Eric Thompson should be commended for making the Magic Roundabout so successful just from his method alone. Anyone can just wing it and call it a day, but wanting to attribute your own take on the footage in a meaningful way is incredible. I mention all this because, well, the good old US of A tried to do the same thing when a film adaptation was acquired, and we fucked it up. Or, uh, more specifically, a uh, creepy old rapist fucked it up. Okay, I'm exaggerating just a little bit, but there is a significant drop in appreciation for this movie depending on which nationality was behind their version. The film did well in France and even saw a full television reboot of the series using the film's original character designs, and from what I can tell, Hell, the UK version is considered infinitely better than the US version, no matter how you feel about the former. Whether you like it or not, it's still better than what the Weinstein Company had to offer. There are a few things about the UK version that were already pretty weak, at least in my opinion. The quality of the animation was definitely not the best, the character designs were really ugly, and the dialogue and story were just really bland, you know, basic things that you can expect from a mediocre animated film. And these things do bother me, don't get me wrong, but I'm inclined to be nicer to these elements because they are not the sole reason why 
I hate Dougal as much as I do. The big reason for why I hate the US adaptation is solely based on the fucking awful script. Anyone seen Pimp My Boat? So unlike our adaptation of the show, Dougal's dialogue was rewritten to be more appealing to an American audience. The original credit to this rule was given to Butch Hartman, creator of The Fairly Odd Parents. Butch does go into detail about the situation on both his podcast and personal YouTube channel, but I'll still give a brief summary of what happened. Harvey Weinstein purchased the UK's Magic Roundabout film and met with Butch to discuss the film, and both of them agreed that it was pretty boring and not easily accessible to an American audience. So Butch begins discussing how he can improve the original film. Now, Butch can't edit or change the movie too much, but he does suggest that they could do something akin to The Princess Bride, where they intersplice live-action segments of someone reading a story to a child, and presenting the entire story of Dougal as, like, a fairy tale. Harvey does like the idea, and the deal is sealed, however, Butch also has to go through the film and rewrite all the dialogue, taking out most of the British sayings and references, and he also has to take into consideration what the actual animation is presenting, because obviously you can't just dub anything you one, you have to look at what the characters are physically saying and match that as well. So obviously this task was difficult. Not too long afterward, the live action segments were cancelled due to budget limitations, Butch's name was removed from most of the posters in favor of the French studios, and then the big bombshell would arrive on opening night of the film's release. So the movie comes out and uh, they rewrote most of my stuff. Most and and re-recorded it? They re-recorded it. Re wow. Most of my stuff was rewritten, re-recorded. And so the movie that you see, I had maybe 3% to do with. Really? So That little of it? That wow. little of it. So when, when people see Dougal and they want to get mad at me, yeah. don't get mad at me. Because, yeah. I mean, I was I tried to save that movie and I tried to make it better. Mm -hmm. And I'm not making excuses. If it was me, I would tell you. Honestly, it was taken out of my grasp and uh, Harvey Weinstein kind of ruined my, <laughs> I mean, yeah. the parts. He didn't seem to be overly bothered by the experience, but I can't help but feel really irritated on his behalf. The whole thing felt like a giant marketing gimmick using the name of a well-regarded cartoonist with a very popular kid show to sell a film and then cast out his involvement right before the film's release. And what do they have to show for it? Animals will be harmed in the making of this film. Uh, what's up, Doc? Personal hygiene. <laughs> Someone's been watching CSI. Many critics and irritated fans of The Magic Roundabout describe this movie as being nothing but pop culture references and potty humor. But all of these elements are tied together by the single biggest problem that I personally found with this script. Instead of overhauling the UK version in order to make it more accessible and entertaining, this new screenplay opted to keep the boring tone and make the dialogue a series of confusingly written jokes, random conversations, and every staple 2000s humor found in family movies. <laughs> it's hardly the Orange Express, darling. Does it have first class? <laughs> what? Did you see that? He just pressed a magic button and made a train. Now that's what I'm talking about. You got it. I'm the train and you're not. Now, what do we have here? Ah. Uh -huh. The whole place is booby trapped. Ah, here we go. Men's room, food court. Ha! Booby trapped lobby. I think he's trying to tell us something. Have you seen our friend Dougal? Big black nose. Looks like a bad hair day on legs. Don't worry, I speak moose, everyone. Hey, buddy. Mama say, mama sa, mama say, suka. Yeah, dude, this is Studio and Inagata DeVita. Come on! It's confusing, too. Not just because you can't follow what the fuck they're even talking about, but you have to wonder why they thought this was an improvement over the original UK version. Sure, characters in the UK version were a bit more boring in how they spoke, but they had structure, and the shit they said mattered for the most part. It was relevant. Take this scene with z and this little toy soldier guy. I can't really remember his name off the top of my head. In the original, most of the segment involves z just going over his plan with the toy soldier, but in the rewrites, both he and z just really like spitting out completely random comments and jokes one after the other. This ain't the ballet, Nutcracker. Don't have the shoes for it, sir. I don't know, but I've been told we're gonna make the world real cool. I call this one the spin cycle. Look at that, I'm great. Oh, I'm average. Oh, I'm terrible. Oh. Ten. Hi. I'm back. It's a bit of a loophole. You don't like it, talk to HO. Animals will be harmed in the making of this film. What's interesting to note about this little gag with the baton is that the soldier was completely silent in the UK version. Just music was played over it, but in this, he likes to be a bit of a chatty bastard. In fact, this is a bit of a trend for this film, too. A few completely silent characters get their own dialogue. Now, to be fair, in the UK version, they did that, too. In the UK, they gave the previously silent train its own voice, and we just cast Chevy, when do I get to say the N-word chase to play him? But it's a train. 
thing. He never had a mouth in this version, so it's a little easier to get away with that. However, Judy Dench got to have a narrator role, something that didn't exist in either the French or UK version, and something that really didn't need to be added since all of the stuff she said was already being delivered by the characters, so she's fucking useless in this movie. None of them wanted to believe it, but in his heart, Dougal knew it was true. Zebedee had gone forever. I can't believe he's really gone. Zeb's dead, baby. Zeb's dead. And then we have this moose who was voiced by Silent Bob. What a fitting casting choice. <laughs> I said no. I know where your dog is. Dougal. They couldn't film a few live action scenes because of the budget, but they had enough money to rewrite the entire script, bring back the celebrities to re-record their lines, and fill two non-existent roles with decently popular celebrities. And like I said, they're not really adding anything, especially with the Kevin Smith role because the moose didn't talk in the original, and having him talk in this just doesn't add anything. All he does is spit out a few pop culture references and fart jokes. Oh yeah, were you shocked to figure out that those were in this movie too? This movie from 2005? Yeah, dude, this is Studio and Inagata DeVita. Come on! You now I never got on board with this whole anti-potty humor slant that critics take, or even the pop culture reference hate. I do think certain movies do these angles well, especially when it's adding satire. Shrek is a good example of that. But Dougal isn't really much of a satire with decent pop culture callbacks. It's cramming in everything without any care. Like a really bad orgy. Uh, what's up, Doc? Someone's been watching CSI. Anyone seen Pimp My Boat? We can't do that, sir. Geneva Convention, sir. I don't care if it's a Star Trek convention! <laughs> Trekkies! Nerd alert! <laughs> Beam him out! Yeah, it's... it's that bad. In fact, this Aztec temple scene is the absolute worst when it comes to it. Let me just... Let, let, let's just show you for... I'll just show you myself. Very Pink Floyd. Back when I was on Soul Train, I had all the moves. Here's Johnny. Bring out your dead pirates of the Caribbean. What's that? Bone thugs and harmony up in here. Look at all dawn of the dead and everything. I train with Morpheus. Wu-Tang Clan. My name is Neo. There is no spoon. Hammer time. You know you can't touch this. Wax on. Wax off. Just a couple of muggles on a way to Hogwarts here for a pickup from he who must not be named. Someone's been watching CSI. I'll take familiar over the Temple of Doom any day. Now, I'm not an expert in writing or even how to write screenplays or even comedy for that matter. But I don't think it's hard to avoid these lazy decisions. Kids aren't fucking stupid and they certainly don't need the characters to remind them that better movies exist every five seconds. Seconds. This is the type of pop culture reference comedy that I really fucking despise. When you don't know what to write, just call back to something that people will know. I know how unorthodox this video might seem, normally because I discuss the story. That would take up probably half the video. It's not very good, I'll say that. The concept itself is just... <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> These innocent child-friendly characters are going on a hunt for infinity stones, and it's about as stupid as kids' plots go, but the plot doesn't really matter to everything that I just mentioned. In fact, it's only supplementary to why this movie is as bad as it is. It's one thing to have an ugly animated film with a boring plot. It's another thing to have an ugly movie with a boring plot, and then letting the Weinstein company come all over it. <laughs> I'm taking Butch at his word that he put the time into rewrites and directing, and I would have liked to see his interpretation if that's truly the case, because I can't fathom what Dougal currently is now. When I rewatched this movie over five years ago, I was put off by the content exclusively. It was doing nothing for me. Knowing what I know now about the production background, it's even fucking worse. Because that bad content comes with the added baggage of sloppy management from people who probably didn't care about the quality of the final product. The writing is all cobbled together with no rhyme or reason, and this character group is just full of good friends that never seem to like one another, so it's not even fun to get invested in them. The acting isn't great either, though I don't really blame the actors for this at all. It's probably one of the weirdest projects any of them have ever worked on. Who will obey my every command? And I gotta admit, I like the mustache. I do obey my every command. And the lip syncing too. Oh my god, I paid close attention to this on my multiple rewatches, and it's uncanny how many times character animations just don't match with the American dub. Ermintrude is about to begin. Be nice. Hey, buddy. Mama say, mama sa, mama say, suka. Oh, really? Ice nay, I tray. I studied pig Latin in high school, dog. So fly. You know you can't touch this. Sweet move. That was great. 
just weird team. But they also created an issue where characters will talk during segments of animation that have no dialogue at all, or where their lips aren't even moving. I call this one the spin cycle. Look at that, I'm great. Oop, I'm average. Oop, I'm terrible. Oop. Yeah, maybe we should have done that on two. These technical issues, these writing issues, all of these things were completely the result of the Americans' additions. When you combine all of them together, you've made a previously bland movie into what could go down as one of the worst animated movies ever made. Sometimes you can just make something bad from scratch. It'll either stand on its own or it'll be completely entertaining. But you can also work off of an existing film and then let Harvey Weinstein destroy that too. Too.